In the beginning, it was rather opportunistic, so it was dependent on where contacts was made and how they were sort of developed, and, and then all of a sudden, uh, during a feasibility study or something like that, then it was uh, identified as a potential business area. Uh, at, at, at the, in those days, you could call it a machine building company or a production unit company that, that made a production plant and uh, of, of course according to the customer's specifications. Uh, today that is not the case. Uh, this is where the, uh, the company ran into financial problems in, uh, in, in 2005 and uh, it was decided that uh, one of the reasons why it was uh, difficult to, to, to operate it as a continued plant here was that you need enormous resources and they need to be exploited continuously to be profitable. Uh, and, and you have little uh, knowledge that you could transfer from one project to the next. You basically have to start very close to basic every time you get a new contract. So uh, it was decided that we would develop technologies and protect them and then uh, actually market the use of these within some very attractive business areas. And, uh, and the key corner of this in 2006 when the company was publicly listed and the first North stock exchange in Denmark was the energy area where this, uh, it's called Catlik, it's a brand name for the uh, in energy technique, uh, now was uh, coming into uh, a, a really stronger phase. The first oil was actually produced at the pilot plant where we could uh, see that the oil was Similar, similar energy content as normal crude oil. And, and therefore, all of a sudden, this should carry uh, the focus of what we would like to do in the future. What we didn't know in those days, and what still is, uh, is a focus area for our commercial activities, is to find out what kind of feeds should we use to produce uh, these uh, raw oils in the future. Where is uh, the uh, feeds that that we need to convert into oil, um, offering the best potential for us in terms of creating value for, for the uh, chains that, uh, that need to operate here. We have established a function uh, called a project appraisal function uh, to which uh, we um, uh, have established a uh, true, uh, called a state gate process that uh, the first thing that uh, before we ever establish a project, we have a pre-project uh, where we need to verify that it's possible to do the technology. We need to verify that there is a, a potential revenue stream. We need to understand what are the competitors. We need to understand what, uh, what is the business area here uh, looking like. These uh, things are going to be worked with systematically under a function called project appraisal. And uh, that project appraisal in this sense reports to one of the uh, man management team members and uh, once completed, usually taking uh, one to two months, then it's presented to the management board for formal decisions. Are we going to uh, uh, consider this uh, or are we going to establish a project plan uh, for developing this on a commercial scale, yes or no. Uh, if so, then the owner of the project is sales and marketing, and the technological responsible is uh, making sure that the resources to develop this technologically is present and uh, described, and as a responsible project manager coming from this end of the organization.